First Samuel chapter 10. First Samuel chapter 10. We are looking at what I call your head and your prophetic blessings. Your head and your prophetic blessings. First Samuel chapter 10. I was starting from verse 1. Then Samuel took a vial of oil. He was conscious of what he was doing. God told him to carry out this assignment. It is not man made, it is God made. He took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head, not his shoulder, not his legs, but upon his head. The head was the target. Grab his head and pour the oil on the head. And after that, he kissed him and said, Is it not because the Lord has anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? When thou art departed from me today, then thou shalt find two men by Rikas Sipoka in the border of Benjamin at Zerka. And they will say unto thee, The asses which thou wanted to seek are found. And lo, thy father has left the care of the asses and sold it for you, saying, what shall I do for my son? Then shall thou go on forward from things. You can see what these prophetic blessings did in the life of this young man. After his head has collected that oil, said, Thou shalt go forward from tents. Not going backward. Going forward. And thou shalt come to the plain of Tabor. And there shall meet thee three men going up to God to Bethel. Bethel means the house of God or the house of bread. That is the three men that is going to meet you. They are going to add to your debt, not subtract from it. You will meet these three men and another carrying three loaves of bread and another carrying a bottle of wine. And they will salute thee. Not they will fight thee. Not they will get angry with you. That is, they will celebrate you. They will honor you. They will bow down for you. That is what Samuel was telling Saul. They will salute you. They will salute you. I like that. They will salute you. They will honor you. He's talking about somebody here. They will salute you. They will respect you. They will honor you. They will bow down to you. I'm not only that. And they will give the two loaves of bread which thou shalt receive from their hand. 
After that, thou shalt come to the hill of God. From the house of Bethel to the hill of God. So his destiny was just moving forward, moving forward from glory to glory, from glory to glory, from glory to glory. Where is the garrison of the Philistines? And it shall come to pass when thou art come into the city that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from high place with pastry and tablets and a pipe and a harp before them and they shall prophesy. And to not capital. Not a woman being now. Verse 6. And the Spirit of the Lord. You can see that it's just moving from one revelation to another revelation. From one dynamic experience to another dynamic experience. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee. And thou shalt prophesy with them. And shall be turned into another man. Samuel the prophet pronounced a prophetic blessing upon the head of Saul. And you can see all that happened to him. One good thing that can happen to your life is for the prophetic blessing to locate your destiny or to land on your head. It is a very wonderful experience. It is like someone hitting a spiritual jackpot. There are blessings. And there are blessings. Some blessings will only announce you to a few friends and relatives. Just few people around you. It will just announce you around them. But there are some blessings that will announce you to the whole nation and beyond. Take for example the blessings that landed upon the life of Obedidom. That blessing announced him to the whole nation. And within three months, everybody in Israel began to celebrate the family, the life, and the person of Obedidom. He could not hide that blessing. It became noticed. What is coming upon somebody today? What is going to land on your head today? Within three months, the story of your life will make people to say, Glory be to the name of the Lord. The power that is available inside prophetic blessing can swallow any negative family history within a second. Within a second, the power that resides inside prophetic blessing. It does not matter where you are coming from. Whether you are a product of fornication or adultery, it doesn't matter. When the prophetic power blessings lands upon you, within a second, it will swallow up all your sorrows. 
And that was what happened to Saul here. The prophetic blessing came upon him. And the Bible says, and he turned him to another man. His family history was catapulted to the mountain of celebration. And the whole nation began to celebrate him. I pray for you this morning that today's service will mark a new beginning of greatness in your life. If that prayer is for you, let your amen roar like thunder. Every service is not the same. Every service is not the same. The anointing upon a particular service is different from another service. The anointing of today's service is to catapult your destiny to a great height. Where the people will look at you and they will say, Oh Lord, if you can do it for him, if you can do it for this man, if you can bless this woman so much like this, I want the same kind of blessing. That shall be your story in the name of Jesus. Your head and your prophetic blessing. In receiving prophetic blessing, listen very carefully now. The most important part of your body that should agree with the blessing is your head. If your head is not in agreement with it, it will not do you any good. In the Bible, God's blessings are released upon people's head. Not on their legs. Not on their stomach. But on their head. There is a reason for it. The first thing Prophet Samuel did to Saul before he began to release that prophetic blessing upon him was to anoint his head with oil. He grabbed his head and poured the oil on his head. Spiritually speaking, there is a strong link between your head and your breakthrough. There is a strong link between your head and your success in life. If your head is, is, if your head is not in agreement with divine verdicts, Greatness, success will be far away from you. The parents of Jesus, they were seriously warned that no razor should touch his head. Why? Because he was going to be a special child. Your head can put the whole of your life in trouble. At the same time, your head can make the whole of your life to be sweet. Therefore, by the power in the name of Jesus, I speak to your head now. You head, hear the word of of the Lord. You shall be lifted high. Amen is not an encouragement to the preacher. It is an accepted acceptance of divine verdict upon your life. I speak to your head again that by the power that is in the name of Jesus your head shall be lifted high. 
in the name of Jesus. Let me quickly give you some vital facts about the head of man generally. Number one, the first part of your body that gets in contact with this physical world is your head. When a child is born, he comes out with his head. That is how God designed it. Everything God does is for a reason. Any child that tries to come out with the leg or with other things can put the mother in trouble. The first part of your body that gets contact with the physical world is the head. Number two. No man can function or be alive without the head in place. You may not have the leg. Still be alive. You may not have the eyes. Still be jumping around. But no man can function or be alive without the head in place. Three. The oil of God is only released upon the head. Everywhere in the Bible is on the head, on the head, on the head. The Sunday says, Thou anointed my head with oil. And when that oil touches his head, his cup runneth over. When the Holy Ghost fire appeared on the day of Pentecost, the Bible says it divided himself and then he sat on their head. The head. Number four. Your head is the symbol of your destiny. Your destiny is spiritual. But the symbol of it is that your head. So destiny cannot be fulfilled if your head had been tampered with spiritually. The head. Number five. It is possible to have a polluted or manipulated head unknowingly. A polluted head. A defiled head. That was the head that Eliab, Eliab had. The kingly oil rejected the head of Eliab. His looks look like that of a king. He had the stature of a king. But his head, his head, his head, is a polluted head. So, so when the oil was coming upon the head, when the oil was coming upon his head, there was a shout in heaven. Don't try it. No way. Why? For I have rejected him. God opening his mouth to shout at a man that he has been rejected. If God rejects a man, who will accept him? The devil. Demons. Polluted head. Any voice that is crying against your head, I command that voice to shut up forever. In the name of Jesus. The head. Number six. The head of man is a spiritual gate. Spirit gate. Through which things enter. 
either good or bad. So things can enter into the life of a man through the head. Things can also exist through the head. The head. Number seven. Anyone causing your head is actually defiling your ministry and your assignment. Anyone cursing your head. What the person is doing is that is defiling your ministry. It's defiling your assignment. That was why prophet Elisha did not take it kindly with those little children who were cursing his head. They said to him, Bad man, go up. Bad man, go up. The Bible says in anger, he commanded a dangerous animal to appear supernaturally and devour them. And when he released the curse upon them, God honored it. God didn't say, well, they are little children. Their parents will become childless. They don't understand what they are doing. No. Why? Because they are attacking the oil on his head. Anyone cursing your head is actually defiling your ministry and your assignment. Therefore, I speak with holy anger. The kind of anger that Elisha manifested. Any power that is cursing your head shall die without repair. The head. Number eight. According to First Timothy chapter five verse twenty two. Problems can be transferred into your own life through the head of another man. So when you lay hands on the head of someone, you can be a partaker of their sin. You can lay hands on the shoulder, no problem. Or on the chest, no problem. Or the stove, no problem. But once your hand landed on that head, if you are not spiritually strong and you don't have the salmon spirit, you can partake out of his trouble. The head. Number nine. If you have incisions on your head, the whole of your life will be alternating between frustration and disappointment. They will just be changing buttons in their hands. If you have incisions on your head. Number 10. One careless mistake. Just one. Not two, not three. Just one careless mistake about your head can cause untold damage to your destiny. Just one careless mistake. Samson made a terrible mistake by putting his head on the lap of Delilah. And you know, he became a grinder of pepper for his enemies. It is very, very sad. As I'm talking now, a lot of heads are on the laps of Delilah. The Delilah of their father's house. The Delilah of their mother's house. And because of that, their lives are in total confusion. 
And any head that is suffering from the attack of the power of Delilah. I command that head now. Receive deliverance. A threefold amen. The primary agenda of the power of Delilah is to render a person's life useless before God and before man. But most of the time, their target is always the head. Always the head. There is a reason why we are talking about this today. Because it is time for the people of God to possess their possession. It is time for them to experience what is known as prophetic blessings. The kind of blessing that will announce them not only to their immediate family but to the whole nation. And as I'm saying it again, as I'm hearing it in my spirit, that there's somebody here within three months, the story of your life will cause national celebration. In the name of Jesus. Why am I saying this? From 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. The Lord told me to begin to pray on this message. That this is what I wanted to do. So I want to display my goodness. Just like I did in the life of Obededom. That within three months, everything about him just changed. I say it again, you. That there's somebody here. Within three months, your celebration shall be nationwide. In the name of Jesus. It is not a joking matter. I'm not saying it to excite you. Or to make you feel good. You don't play with spiritual things like that. It's dangerous. What the Lord said. He will do. Those who understand the principle of spiritual warfare, they will openly tell you that 21 things can happen to the head of man. They will tell you. They will not hide it from you. Number one. They will tell you that the head of man can be bewitched. Bewitched. A bewitched head will always be in the wrong place at the wrong time. And you know, bewitchment is the ancestor of slavery. Anyone operating under bewitchment will definitely be a slave. Two. They will tell you that the head of man can be caged. Caged heads will lead to caged lives. Number three. They will tell you that the head of man can be summoned or called in the dark world. They summon the head. They call the head. 
Those are the type of people that hear strange voices. Number four. They will tell you that the head of man can be made to carry evil loads. Evil loads. So the person will just be feeling heavy. Sweating inside cold weather. In London, I went to the market and I saw this very tall, handsome, white guy. Someone that when you see, you will admire him. But as I was looking at him, all of a sudden, I saw something else. I saw a coffin on his head. But the man was just laughing and talking. His head has been made to carry evil load. Anyone here that is carrying any load that does not belong to you, I command that load on your head to catch fire. Fire! 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 In the name of Jesus! Number five, they will tell you. That the hand of man can be marked spiritually. So the mark will be there. And the person will not even know that the head has been marked. So anywhere the person appears, it is this mark that the mark will be speaking against him. So don't help this one. The way I'm looking at this one. It looks like a dubious person. Let me run away from this one. It is the mark. The mark. Six. They will tell you that the head of man can be exchanged. This may sound strange, but it is true. There are so many people. Their head on their shoulder now is not their real head. Long, long time ago, it has been exchanged. The devil can go to any length to destroy man. The sister came crying and she came with a letter. What happened? A brother proposed to her. After two or three months later, she noticed that the brother was dodging her. Dodging her. She went to his place of work to look for the brother. When the brother saw him, saw her, he ran. That was a day the brother saw him, her coming. The sister to saw the brother afar off. And there is no way this brother could hide. According to the sister, the only place where that brother could hide was inside the boot of his car. So do you know what, what happened? He entered there inside the boot. The boot of he just does not want to have anything to do with the sister again. At that level, the sister got confused. Later, the brother now wrote her a letter. Letter says, My dear sister, I am very sorry. I cannot continue because anytime I see you now, I always see the face and the head of an old woman. 
Anytime I look at you, old woman, old woman, and because of that, I don't want you. You can go. And sister brought the letter. He said, look at me. And when I looked at the sister, she physically, beautiful, very nice, no pamming, no eyebrow, no painting, but the head, the head, is the head of an old woman. The head has been exchanged. Any power from your village that wants to exchange your head, I command that power. As you say a sevenfold amen, I command that power immediately now to fall down and die. It. They will tell you that the hand of man can be I pity those who put curses on their own heads. They put curses on their own heads. I pity them a, a lot. Number nine. They will tell you. Number what? Thank you. You are following me in the spirit. <laughs> Number eight. The head of man can be manipulated. Manipulated. Such people, they will always be thinking evil thoughts. Evil thoughts. They can't control the thoughts. It is because somebody somewhere has a power that is manipulating the head. Number nine. They will tell you that the head of man can be yoked together with that of an animal. They will yoke the head together with that of an animal. It may be that of a goat or a dog or a cat. And then the person will now begin to manifest the character of that animal. Why? Because his head had been yoked together with that animal. Ten. They will tell you that the head of man can be imprisoned. So anything that touches that head will be in trouble. Trouble. Eleven. They will tell you that the head of man can be made to be sick. Many of such heads are in psychiatric hospital. If they can pray deliverance prayer on that head, many of them will be set free. Twelve. They will tell you that the head of man can suffer oppression. Oppression. And this will lead to the dullness of life. The life will be so dull unattractive, uninteresting. Thirteen. They will tell you that the head, the enemy can sit on the head of a man. He will sit on that head. It's like the story of that woman. In her dream, somebody came and said, I want to park my car. 
said, then pack your card now. said, no, I want to pack it on your head. And she agreed. And that person packed his car on the head of this woman. You may say, but ah, how can his head carry a big car? Anything is possible in the spirit realm. It was because she came for prayer. That was what she told me. Said they have used my head as a parking space. Fourteen. They will tell you that glory can be withdrawn from the head of a man. Glory. And this is very, very sad that a lot of people's glory because of their carelessness had been stolen. Because what carries your glory is not your leg, but your head. But hear the word of the Lord. Today's service is designed for you. Your stolen glory shall be restored in the name of Jesus. Fifteen. They will tell you that the head of man can be buried. Only the head. Buried. Inside the grave. So the head is technically dead. The head is dead. Sixteen. They will tell you that virtue can be washed away from the head of a man. Virtue washed away. If you have ever allowed a prophet to wash your head, or a herbalist to touch your head, you need to pray seriously this morning. Because definitely, something has been tampered with in your destiny. 17. They will tell you that the head of man can be used as a point of evil contact. Evil contact. So the head becomes a point of reference for evil. 18. They will tell you that the head of man can be spiritually monitored. They monitor the head. They want to know whether the staff are still there. 19. They will tell you that the poison of death can be injected into the head of a man. The poison of death. So the person is just waiting to die suddenly. Such people will never fulfill their lives on planet Earth. They will cut them short. 20. They will tell you that the head of man can be lowered. Instead of being lifted up, lowered. And 21, just like it happened to John the Baptist, the head of man can be cut off. A demonic girl was dancing in the palace. But that dancing is to target the head of a prophet. Say, so what do you want? So I want the head of John the Baptist. What will she use the head for? 
And she wants to eat the head? No. It's just to waste his testimony. Any power dancing in the coven in order to attack your head. Suddenly, suddenly, they shall die. I said, suddenly, suddenly, they shall die. I said, suddenly, suddenly, they shall die. In the name of Jesus. In Psalm number 3. Psalm number 3. Your head. And your prophetic blessing. In Psalm number 3. Verse 3. But thou, O Lord. As a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter of my head. The lifter of my head. The lifting up of your head is the lifting up of your life. There is a prophetic reason why Jesus had to break the head of the serpent in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. There is a prophetic reason for that. The breaking of the head of the serpent completely neutralized the power and the poison of the serpent. The serpent called the devil can no longer boast of his power and strength. Why? Because his head, which is the powerhouse, had been broken. That is why you as a believer, you must jealously guide and protect your own head seriously. Because the devil is after it. Have you ever carried sacrifice on your head before? Have you ever used a charm to hit your head before? Just because you wanted favor or a contract? Have you ever scraped your hair before? Because somebody died in your family. When the Bible says you should not do so. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 14 verse 1. Have you ever allowed someone to make incisions on your head before? Have you ever used your own head to cast somebody before? You say, my head will do this, my head will do that. When you have the name of Jesus there, you you see your head. Have you ever used the blood of an animal to wash your head before? Have you ever put your head inside a flowing river before for protection? Because somebody asked you to do it. And you did it. Have you ever made a covenant using your head as an object of the covenant before? Do you notice that sometimes your head becomes bigger and larger than its normal self? Have you ever in your life seen someone who had died before? And then your head now becoming big and bigger and bigger and bigger. Have you ever allowed a strange hand to touch your head before? Because for so many people, this is the area where the enemy is hiding to punish and to torment their destiny. When we are at Old Yaba Road, we live very close to the church then. They brought one woman. She was rolling on the floor. She was crying and screaming. She was in serious pain. 
and she was crying my head my head my head this headache this migraine I can't bear it again my head I wanted to pray for her the Holy Ghost said no give her prayer points let her go and pray and in that sorry condition I told her madam I'm giving you prayer points give me, go and pray this prayer I said please pray for me I said no the Lord said you should pray this prayer that when you pray the prayer it will heal you so she went back home started praying the prayer that night it was the prayer that she was praying she slept on and she saw in her dream she found herself inside the saloon she looked at the face of the woman that was doing her hair that was the woman that used to do her hair all of a sudden she noticed that the woman just opened part of her head put a straw inside the head and was drawing something out she would draw the thing and put it inside a keg draw the thing from the head put it inside the keg until the egg was full until the keg was full and then she closed the head she woke up without anybody interpreting the dream she knew where the problem came from a stranger has touched her head my sister hey who is plating your hair for you my brother who is babbing your hair for you? The devil is badly bad and wickedly wicked. You are the one that has forgotten that you are on the battlefield. He did not forget. You are his target. Some people need to pray dangerous prayer here today. But the good news is this. The power that can neutralize bewitchment power on your head is the power of the prophetic. The prophetic blessings. Once it lands on your head, it can cancel anything that is called negativity. Therefore, by the power that established this ministry, today, today, your head will encounter Jesus. You are only going to do three things. If you want your head to agree with the prophetic blessing that shall be released now. Number one, if you are not born again, you have not started at all. You must totally, completely give your life to Jesus. That is the first thing number two call upon God to empower you to fight against the enemies of your lifting up you call upon God to empower you because you need special power 
to fight against those powers that does not want your heads to be lifted up. And then the third thing that we need to do today is that when the time for prophetic blessings comes, the whole of your being must say a very powerful amen to receive it. And I'm believing God. Again, for somebody here, according to the prophecy of the Lord, that within three months, within three months, your celebration shall be nationwide. Bow down your head and close your eyes. Quietly. Between you and your God now, quietly now. Speak to the Lord. Father, any area of my life that you are not happy with forgive me I confess forgive me Lord I must not leave this place without my head carrying my own prophetic blessings my head must not reject the oil of elevation if you are serious with it, God is watching you. If you are not saying anything, He's watching you. If you are sleeping or dozing, He's watching you. And if you are serious, He's watching you too. Speak to the Lord quietly. Any area of my life, O oh Lord, that is not right. This morning, Father, forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray.